Amblyopia is a diagnosis of exclusion that can be caused by strabismus, anisoconia, and anisometropia. The prevalence of amblyopia in children has been estimated to be between 1% and 4%. Clinically, students are taught about the causes and treatments of amblyopia, but how do patients feel about being diagnosed and living with amblyopia? I used to watch a lot of like Terminator movies with like Arnold Schwarzenegger and I used to see him wink. So I wanted to see how it felt to like be able to wink at somebody. So then I started closing one eye and then the other one and then I started noticing that one eye was hotter than the other one. It stopped, it didn't work as well as the good one. So and that's how I noticed that I had the left eye problem. My mom asked me, uh, cover one eye and asked me if I could see out of that eye and I told her no, so, and then she just took me to the eye doctor, and that's how we find out. I was diagnosed with amblyopia at age four, and proceeded to have patching therapy done on my glasses, and I went to my optometrist's office once a week for a half hour, as I remember, for my vision therapy, and that lasted about five or six years. And I was in handball, and um, I, I used to play it because I stopped because I noticed that like my my vision like it couldn't like aim the ball accurately on my left hand side and I tried like training to, to like become better at that side but I, it just couldn't because my left eye is not picking up the ball as quick as I could be. I feel like I would stay indoor more because I uh, I patched when I was little so I usually patched for like four hours a day so I would just stay in. And I can't see a three D movie. I can't hit a baseball like someone else. I can't shoot pool like someone else. I could not be a pilot. I mean, there are many things in life that I can't do because of my amblyopia. Well, I'm normally reading with my right eye because uh, when I'm reading, I just like follow with my finger to catch up, catch up like when I'm reading. I do lack some depth perception. I do lack some stereo. Um, and I use my right eye when I do ophthalmoscopy on both patients' eyes. So I have them turn their head and turn their eyes so I can see into their left eye with my right eye because I get a better view. I don't see well enough out of the left to see. Uh, but with modern technology, like OCTs and other devices, they see the depth for me. You so know, doing slip lamp and BIO, you need binocular vision. And I'm pretty, um, my stereo is pretty bad, so. In that case, I think I would rely on technology more. Classically, amblyopia has been treated by a regimen of patching, with studies showing anywhere from two to six hours a day can have optimal results. But today, new studies have shown new and innovative ways practitioners can treat amblyopia. Uh, it did help me uh, to choose my career path as, a, as an optometrist because that's where I always go to optometrist um, to check my eyes. The initial so. job I wanted to be was an architect, um, but decided not to do that before college and didn't know what I wanted to do. And my eye doctor during my pre-college eye exam said, you should look at optometry as your profession. I do think having amblyopia makes me more sensitive to patients. I can certainly understand what they're seeing. So when they're trying to explain why their weak eye doesn't see as well as their good eye and they're describing essentially the crowding effect, I know to single line the eye chart. I know to move to single letters. I know how to coax better acuity out of them. And I think I'm just more comfortable with an amblyope than others might be. I mean, you should listen to your child. Your child like, probably knows what he knows best because you know, it's his vision. You, you're not looking into his eyes. Like, you know, he has a problem or, or she, mm -hmm. so you should actually look into that or ask a doctor about it, your eye doctor.